So here's a quick lesson on writing ionic formulas. So these are ionic compounds. These are always going to involve a metal and a nonmetal. That's one of the first important things to understand about these compounds. Okay, and what we've learned previously about metals and nonmetals is that metals are going to lose electrons and nonmetals are going to gain electrons. Now what this means is that uh, we're going to need to understand how to do Lewis dot diagrams in order to do this properly. So for all of these compounds, if you know how to do the Lewis dot diagram for an element, you should be able to figure out this ionic formula for a substance. So a perfect example of this that uh, we've gone over before is sodium and chloride. Or sodium chloride, actually. Sodium, a sodium atom and a chlorine atom. So a sodium atom has one valence electron and a chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. So if sodium loses its valence electron and chlorine gains its valence electron, this is a, a nice, neat, perfect little ratio here. So this electron here will get pulled over into the chlorine's orbital. And now chlorine has a full outer level and sodium, who just lost an electron, its outer level will actually disappear and it'll go down to the next lower level. And so now sodium will have a full outer level as well. So that means sodium now, having lost an electron, will be a positive ion. Chlorine will be a negative ion with its seven valence electrons out here, or excuse me, eight now, that it has stolen one from sodium. And that means if we have a positive charge and a negative charge, there's going to be an attractive force between the two, and they will stick together in a crystal lattice structure over and over again. You'll get a sodium atom next to a chlorine atom, next to a sodium atom, next to a chlorine atom, and they do that over and over again, forming a nice neat grid in a three-dimensional form, which you can see in class. Okay. Or you can Google search images of a sodium chloride crystal and see lots of good examples of a sodium chloride crystal. Overall, we needed one sodium atom to pair up with one chlorine atom. So that means we only need one of each atom in the formula to make the substance sodium chloride. When we name it, we keep the name of the metal. So sodium stays as sodium. Chlorine, we're going to change the ending. So all these nonmetals, we change the ending on to be an IDE ending. So you get sodium chloride. What if it's not a nice, neat, even ratio, though? This worked out nice because sodium has one electron to lose. Chlorine has one electron to gain. So what if it was a different substance or a, a different element with a different number of valence electrons? So a good example of this one might be instead of sodium chloride, what about calcium chloride? So if we have calcium and chlorine, still seven valence electrons on chlorine, but now there are two valence electrons on calcium. So calcium, is being the metal, wants to give away its electrons. So chlorine happily takes one electron from calcium, but we still have this electron left over that calcium needs to get rid of. So the only way to satisfy this calcium atom is to have a second chlorine atom over here. And now there's room for this calcium atom to get rid of its electron. So in order for calcium and chloride to form a compound, we don't have a one-to-one -one ratio anymore. We have a one-to-two ratio. So we end up with a formula of Ca, because we needed one calcium atom, and two chlorines, because we needed two chlorine atoms in order to make that compound. Same, same with the name. We keep the metal name the same, calcium, and we change the ending on chlorine to chloride again, so an IDE ending. What if it's not one of the atoms with seven valence electrons, though? What if we have a substance like oxygen? So let's try sodium again. So Na with its one valence electron. And now let's try oxygen with six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So sodium gives away its one valence electron. There it is there. But oxygen still needs one more. So in order to satisfy the oxygen atom, we need to have a second sodium atom. So sodium gives away that valence electron there, and there now we have a perfectly happy situation here between both types of elements. So in order to make this compound, I needed two sodiums, so I show that in the formula with Na and a two as a subscript, 
and oxygen, I only needed one, so the Na2O. Sodium, we keep the name of the metal. And oxygen, we're going to change the ending to have an IDE oxide. Now, it is a little tricky to figure out all of the endings for all of the different nonmetals, but there's not that many of them. And once you get the hang of it, and once you just learn what the different endings are or what the different words are for these ionic compounds, it's really not that hard to figure out again. Uh, last example will be aluminum and oxygen. So this one, at first, a lot of students, when they, when they try this one, their first reaction is, oh my gosh, this one's going to go on forever. Nothing's ever going to work. But if you just have a little patience and work through it, you'll see that it does actually work out to a nice, neat ratio. So we have aluminum, which has three valence electrons, and oxygen, which has six. Aluminum is going to give away its electron here, and aluminum is going to give away its second electron here. Now this oxygen atom is full. We have one more electron to give away from aluminum. So we need a second oxygen atom. This electron gets given away here. And now that aluminum has given away all of its electrons, but we still need another electron for oxygen. So we need another aluminum atom. So here's one, two, three valence electrons for aluminum. So this aluminum atom now gives away one of its electrons, but this oxygen atom is now full. There's nowhere else for those electrons to go. Aluminum still has two more to give away, so if we add one more oxygen atom, Now this aluminum atom can give away its remaining electrons. And we can see that instead of a one to one ratio or a one to two ratio, this is a two to three ratio. So we needed in this formula, two aluminums and we needed three oxygens. So that's a way to model these, these interactions between electrons, but there's actually a much easier way to do all of these. And it involves knowing what the oxidation number is Okay. And the oxidation number, like I have listed on the homework, that is the charge on the ion after gaining or losing electrons. Okay. So we have to know how many valence electrons they, they have currently, each atom. We have to know if it's a metal or a non-metal because that tells us if it's going to lose electrons and become a positive ion. And if it's a non-metal, that tells us that it's going to gain electrons and become a negative ion. So let's go back and work through the same examples, but this time instead of drawing the electrons, we're just going to work with the oxidation numbers. Okay, Sodium has one valence electron and it's a metal which means it's going to lose an electron. And if it loses an electron, it's going to become a one positive ion. We represent that by just putting a plus sign as an exponent next to sodium. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and it's a nonmetal. And following the octet rule, we know that chlorine needs to gain one more electron. So it becomes a one negative ion. And we write that, we represent that as just drawing a little negative sign. What we now need to do is look at the charges, and we want the total charge on the compound to equal zero. So this one's easy because sodium has a one positive, chlorine has a one negative. Those two total zero on their own. I don't need any additional atoms. It's just a one to one ratio. So I get NaCl. If I go back to calcium chloride, calcium and chlorine. Chlorine's still a one negative ion because it has seven valence electrons. So it's gonna gain one electron. Gaining a negative makes me a one negative. Calcium has two valence electrons and it's a metal. It's on the left side of the periodic table. That makes it a metal. So when it loses both of those valence electrons, it's going to become a two positive ion. Now, in order to get a total of zero, if I have two positives and one negative, I need another one negative to get a total of zero. So in order to write this formula now, I know I need one calcium and two chlorines. So that's a formula of Ca Cl2. And then we had sodium oxide. So sodium, the one positive ion. Oxygen, a two negative ion. It has six valence electrons. It's trying to gain two electrons to get to a total of eight. If you gain two negatives, you become a two negative. So now I want the total charge to be equal to zero. In order to do that, I need two Na positives and one O2 negative. And that means the formula would be Na2 O, just like we got before by modeling with the electron movement. 
Okay. And our last one, aluminum and oxygen. So aluminum is in group 13. That tells me it has three valence electrons. It's a metal. It's going to lose three valence electrons. If you take away negative three in math class, what do you end up with? You end up with positive three. So I get three positive as the oxidation number for aluminum. Oxygen is still a two negative. And so that means in order to get a total of zero, I'm going to have, let's see, well, let's look at the total right now. My total right now is positive one. So that means I need more negatives. So I'm going to add another negative. Now I have negative four and positive three. That's a total of negative one. So I have too many negatives. I need another positive. So now I have a total of six positives and four negatives. So I have too many positives. I need another negative. And now I have a total of six negatives and six positives. And that means the formula for aluminum oxide would be Al2O3.